Hello, my name is Wyatt Robertson, and today I will be telling you all about a 2015 study that looks at sexual orientation and its association with stress response. But first, some background. As we learned in Sapolsky, there are interactions between the HPA axis and sex hormones that influence one's stress reactivity. Additionally, queer individuals actually have a different differences bodily than heterosexual individuals. For example, queer people are more at risk for developing psychological disorders like major depressive disorder and bipolar disorder. And in this presentation, I'll be defining queer as cisgender, gay, and bisexual people. This study uses the Trier Social Stress Test, in which participants actually have to give a stressful recitation or arithmetic in front of a group of straight-faced researchers to induce a stressful reaction. This is a typical stress response uh, for both men and women to a Trier Social Stress Test. You'll note that men and women show different levels of stress reactivity, However, both begin showing the stress reactivity at the beginning of the Trier Social Stress Test and an increase in peak a little bit after the test is concluded. So the researchers hypothesized that queer individuals would show different stress responses to heterosexual individuals of the same sex in, uh, to a psychosocial stressor. The participants, there were 87 participants, ages 18 to 45. 21 of them were heterosexual men, 21 were heterosexual women, 25 were queer men, and 20 were queer women. This is all self-reporting measures of sexual orientation. Furthermore, the researchers used exclusionary factors such as steroid usage, major health problems, severe mental health disorders, and if the individuals were transgender, to include those individuals from, or to exclude those individuals from this study. So the methods. The participants were in this lab for two hours, the first 20 minutes of which were actually dedicated to uh, demographic surveys where they would answer questions about age, um, sexual orientation, race, and self-esteem status. Then, after 20 minutes, the first of 10 different salivary samples were taken. These salivary samples helped the researchers in measuring cortisol levels, and they were taken at 10 minute intervals throughout the rest of the actual experiment. Then, at 50 minutes, the anticipation phase began. The anticipation phase would begin with the researchers telling the participants what stressful event they would have to endure, and after 60 minutes, the Trier social stress test actually occurred. For the first five minutes, the participants were in a room where they had two cameras facing them, a microphone in front of them, and they were facing a two-way mirror, behind which all of the researchers would actually conduct a mock job interview with them. They had to respond just facing the mirror and looking at themselves. After five minutes of the mock job interview, the participants then would have to count backward from a thousand by sevens. After the ten minutes had concluded, the normal salivary samples were taken until the end of the study, where they had the final one and then ten minutes of a debriefing process. The results. The researchers found that heterosexual women actually showed a minor increase in cortisol reactivity levels during the stress test, but then showed lower reactive levels afterward. Queer women, however, showed a small decrease in cortisol reactivity levels during the stress test, but then showed an actual increase in stress, uh, in stress response afterwards, peaking at about 30 minutes, 30 minutes after the stress test had concluded. Heterosexual men, as you can see here, showed a fairly average and expected res uh, stress response results to this acute stressor. However, queer men almost flatlined. They showed almost no variation in their stress response, whether it be during the actual stress test or immediately, or in the following 40 minutes. So the researchers performed repeated measures analysis of covariance uh, with cortisol concentrations as within subject uh, factors and sexual orientation as between subject factors and they control for things like race, age, socioeconomic status, self-esteem measures, disclosure status, which is how out one is to their community about their sexual identity, and then within sex, sex hormones. That means in men, they control for testosterone, and in women, they control for progesterone and estradiol levels. So the researchers concluded that sexual orientation is associated with stress response. But they wanted to look at what this difference was. There was a fourfold increase in cortisol levels in queer women as there were heterosexual women. And they have some um, guesses as to why this may be. The first of which is birth control. Oral contraceptive use was actually shown to lower one stress response in women. Subsequent studies have shown that uh, women who were on birth control just have subdued stress responses as opposed to women who were not. In addition to something called the rumination theory. The rumination, the rumination theory is similar to anxiety, except instead of worrying about something in the future, you worry about something that has already happened. 
This has been shown to predominantly affect women, and in studies since this study has actually come out, has shown that it predominantly affects queer women in general. So this is just one of the many reasons they think why this difference occurred. Additionally, the researchers wanted to look at why there's this five-fold decrease in queer men as opposed to heterosexual men. The first of which is something called minority stress. Minority stress is when an individual endures chronic stress throughout early life and into adolescence, which actually subdues one's uh, stress response to acute stressors later in life. This predominantly affects minority people as they are the ones who endure this chronic stress throughout the majority of their lives. And interestingly enough, gay men actually had the fewest depressive symptoms out of this whole study. They had the highest ratings of self-esteem, which may seem very contrary to what I said earlier in the background. However, I think in considering this, you need to also consider the study's limitations. This study was a self-selecting study. So I believe, and the researchers believe, that the queer men who actually engaged in the study were the ones who already had the fewer depressive symptoms and could already actually uh, monitor and have lower stress responses to these acute stressors that come up later in life. Additionally, this study is cross-sectional, so it does not show any like before or after effects like longitudinal studies, so they can't specifically pinpoint why queer people actually had different stress responses. Additionally, 87 participants is a fairly small sample size, which would lower the power of this actual study overall, and this was, taken, this was done in Montreal, which is a fairly liberal city, which may skew the results in one way or another. But I think it is fair to conclude that sexual orientation does in fact have an association with stress response. Thank you.